Good day to you. Hey, this is John. I came across a few reports that review interesting facts we were never told in regards to Lucy's life. Things she unwittingly followed that may have led her to an early demise, which goes back to when she was 17. This tells me always question your doctor. I always have. Ask questions to be sure they are giving you the correct course of action when it comes to your health. I hope I can connect the dots for you. Let's begin. She died from a heart attack, but what caused it creates questions. If you were a fan of I Love Lucy, you may have questions about how Lucille Ball died and what caused her death. It wasn't what you thought or were told before. She died just a day after she was sent home from the hospital following a successful surgery. Ball, whose full name is Lucille Desiree Ball, was born on August 6, 1911 in Jamestown, New York. She started acting at the age of 12 years old when her stepfather encouraged her to audition for his Shriners chorus line then, in 1926, Ball enrolled at the John Murray Anderson School for the Dramatic Arts in New York City, where Betty Davis was also a student. Ball said in a later interview that all I learned in drama school was how to be frightened. In 1940, Ball met her future husband, Desi Arnaz, while filming the stage show Too Many Girls. The couple married that same year. They bought their first home together in March of 1941 in Chatsworth, California, the corner of Devonshire and Corbin, 19700 Devonshire, an address that really doesn't exist anymore. In 1948, Ball was cast as Liz Cooper, a wacky wife in the CBS radio comedy show, My Favorite Husband. The show ran for 148 episodes. After the success of My Favorite Husband, Ball was asked by CBS to develop it for television, which she agreed if she could work with her real-life husband, Desi. Unimpressed by Desi, CBS did not go forward and things were put on hold, while Ball and Arnaz hit the road as a vaudeville act in which Ball played a zany housewife who tried to get into her husband's show. After the success of their tour, CBS greenlit I Love Lucy, the show named after Desi because of his male pride, so to speak. The show went on to run for more than a hundred episodes and be one of the most watched television shows in history. Ball and Arnez's marriage, which ended for the second time in 1960, this time permanent, later portrayed in the 2021 movie Being the Ricardos in which Nicole Kidman and Javier Bardem starred as the couple. Ball died on April 27, 1989, three years after Desi died of complications related to lung cancer. So how did Lucille Ball die? In part, it was what we were told, but things were withheld. First, some of what we were told. Ball died on April 27, 1989 of a ruptured abdominal aorta. She was 77 years old. Ball experienced shooting pains in her chest while at home in Beverly Hills, California on April 17, 1989. At the insistence of her husband, Gary Morton, and her daughter, Lucy Arnez, Ball was taken to Cedar sinai Hospital in Los Angeles, where she was diagnosed with a dissecting aorta aneurysm, Ball only agreed to go to the hospital if she could dress up and put on her makeup. After her diagnosis, Ball underwent a six and a half hour surgery to repair her aorta and replace her aortic valve. 
The Los Angeles Times reported at the time that Ball had successfully recovered from the surgery to the point where she was eating and walking around her hospital room. So she was sent home. According to People, Ball had wakened after the surgery, conscious and alert, which is why she was released. The magazine reported that Ball asked Morton when she woke, How is the dog doing? He told her Tinker was doing fine. Then she asked, Was it a big surgery? He said, It was a big surgery, but it was a good surgery. On the dawn of April 26, 1989, the day after Ball arrived home from the hospital, she awoke with severe back pain and lost consciousness. Ball's surgically repaired aorta had ruptured again and she went into full cardiac arrest. She was rushed back to the hospital, but the doctors couldn't save her. Ronald Wise, a spokesperson for Cedar Cyanide Hospital at the time, told the Los Angeles Times in 1989 that Ball suffered a complete heart failure at 5 a.m. And after 47 minutes of resuscitation efforts from the hospital, she was declared dead. According to Wise, Ball died from a ruptured abdominal aortic aneurysm, and the rupture occurred in a portion of the aorta, the main artery to the heart, far from where her previous operation was performed. Following her wishes, Ball's body was cremated and her ashes were interned at Forest Lawn in Hollywood Hills Cemetery in Los Angeles. In 2002, her children moved her ashes to the Hunt family plot at the Lakeview Cemetery in Jamestown, New York, where her parents, grandparents, and her brother's ashes were also interned. Forensic pathologist Dr. Michael Hunter claimed that Ball had been using amyl nitrate, a prescription drug used to treat chest and heart pain, as early as four years before her death. The street name for amyl nitrate is poppers. Poppers are a strong smelling inhalant often associated with sex, he said. But its original purpose was a prescription drug to treat pain in the chest. Hunter claimed that the use of amyl nitrate was a warning sign that Ball had an established cardiovascular disease years before she died. In his investigation, he found that cystic medial necrosis, which he described as a breakdown of muscle, collagen, and elastin in the large blood vessels throughout the body, was a contributing cause in Ball's death. The slow tearing of Lucille's aortic lining that had presented itself to doctors eight days earlier had ended in what reporters referred to as an aortic blowout. Surgery could not fix all the damage to this major blood vessel. But what led to this damage? Lucille's death certificate states cystic medial necrosis as a contributing cause to her death, he said. Hunter explained that when blood vessels lose this elasticity and support, it makes them more liable to tear and rupture. Hunter suspected that Ball's death could have been caused by a mysterious illness she had contracted as a teenager. But Lucille seemed so healthy just one month before her death. I want to investigate if there were any previously unknown causes of her heart problems, he said. Could a mysterious illness that she contracted when she was just 17 years old have played a part in the death of America's most loved Lucy? According to the Chicago Tribune, Ball, who had been a mocker her whole life, meaning more or less in her case, she did what she wanted despite the outcome, and also was a great risk taker of an aortic aneurysm due to her history with cigarettes. By the way, she smoked Chesterfield cigarettes. 
Chesterfield was the Liggett and Mayer's Tobacco Company. And many of you fans will remember that Philip Morris was the sponsor for the I Love Lucy show. So on the show, she used to put her Chesterfields in Philip Morris packs. <laughs> and if anyone is interested, Chesterfield was the Liggett and Mayer's Tobacco Company's best known cigarette brand product from 1912 as a Turkish Virginia blended and named for Chesterfield County, Virginia. The brand was first introduced in 1873 by the Drummond Tobacco Company of St. Louis, Missouri. On a more upbeat note, on July 17, 1951, less than three weeks prior to her 40th birthday, Ball gave birth to daughter Lucy Desiree Arnaz. A year and a half later, she gave birth to Desi Dario Alberto Arnez IV, known as Desi Arnez Jr. Twelve hours before the original broadcast on January 19, 1953, Lucy, Lucille Ball, had given birth to Desi Arnez Jr. by cesarean section. And what fan does not know that yet? Okay, sad and heartbreaking as this was, I hope this video was informative, enlightening, and of some benefit. Please subscribe, click the bell to be notified of future videos from me. More coming, and I'll see you in the next one.